by the mega shop. Awesome. We're heading over to see the cows. Hit that like button as you come in the door, guys. If you're not already following the channel, please click that like button and follow. I'd love to have you back here with me. This is our Wednesday night live stream. Every day, uh, every Wednesday, we do a live stream here on the farm. Uh, we're going to ride over here. We're going to move the cows first thing. And we're going to have a little chat. So it should be pretty fun. Good time. We'll get a little visit with the cows and a little visit with the farm. We're headed over to the pond that uh, I did the dam repairs on. I just mowed all this right here day before yesterday. There went a rabbit. And a little rabbit went right through there. There he is. Look, right there. See him running? <laughs> no limit to the wildlife here on the Stony Ridge. <laughs> Welcome to the farm, everybody. As you can tell, it's a little steeper than it looks on TV sometimes. <laughs> All right, looks like we got Dennis in the house. Looks like I've got this thing in the wrong gear. <laughs> it's hard to shift and drive and hold a camera and uh, move cows at the same time, I'll tell you that. The cows are right over there, out in the middle of the field. This is the pond that we did the repairs on the dam and the water level is just rising every single day. It's coming up about a half inch a day. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot of water flow here, about uh, two gallons per minute. The sun is about to set here in beautiful Appalachia. This is Appalachia. The pond's looking beautiful. What do you guys think? Let me know. And welcome to Wednesday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. So we're zipping all the way around here and we're going to go over to the other side. I already got one one cow in the wrong place over here. I guess uh, that cow had a little trouble waiting for us. <laughs> We've got room all the way around the pastures here to drive uh, and maintain our fences very well. Didn't cut myself out of but about half of an acre, maybe an acre total, all the way around the uh, pastures. And man, what a breath of fresh air it is. I'll have the camera turned around here in just a minute, guys. All right. Whip her all the way. We went the long way around so I could show you all the pond. Here's the neighbors. This good, clean living. Cows have been on this section of uh, pasture for three days now up here in the flat field. I call this the upper pasture. We've got a new baby here. And what we're going to talk about today is a little bit about why farms go broke. And man, I got totally disappointed uh, at the uh, cattle auction. I don't know why that cow's on the wrong side of the fence, but we're going to fix that here. We're going to get everybody on the right side. She must have been looking for her baby. It's the only thing I can figure. Round and round we go. Here's the cows. Yeah, that's that's a steer. It must be number 17 out there in the wrong place. Or did he just jump back over into the... <laughs> I don't know. My brain's failing me today. Morning cows or evening cows. Don't worry, buddy. We're all coming your way. <laughs> These young calves, boy, they sure do like to run and play. <laughs> All right. Morning, ladies. What are you mooing about? I told you that's 17 right there. I knew it was. I'm trying to find my new baby. I had, we had a new calf born two days ago. I want to make sure, make sure that new calf is okay. I saw a buzzard. Good gracious. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, let's whip this camera around, guys, and we'll start talking a little bit. So welcome to the farm. <laughs> Willie Bully is, uh, he's found him a lady friend. I hear him. You guys ready to move? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, goodness. Sing it to the cows. <laughs> well, let me get the uh, tripod set up right here. And we're going to get uh, a little shot of the cows. I'm going to move them to this next set section of pasture. Sorry, I know the sun's in your eyes. It's in my eyes, too. <laughs> uh, this is where they've been half the day today, 12 hours. And this is where they're going. You can see the difference in the grass. Grass is a little bit taller. Uh, we'll set you guys up on this tripod and get these girls moved because they're ready. Aren't you, girls? <laughs> All right. How bright is that? Ah, it's just right, isn't it? Good deal. So I'm going to hop the fence right here. Uh, typically, I don't like to do this, but I'm doing it for the live stream. Hey, girls. <laughs> what y'all doing? How y'all doing? Cody, good to see you. <laughs> okay, let's get your camera over here a little bit closer. And uh, we're going to move the cows. I hear Wooly Bully. He's going, he makes this crying sound like, Nyeh. he's over here trying to breed. That makes baby cows. And we thought baby cows makes money for the farm. But guess what? It didn't make much money the other day. All right, girls. I think it's time to move. Oh, So just take this section of wire out right here. And you're going to get to see some bucking happy fun right here. We're going to make 40 animals very happy. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yes, everybody. Come on in. Come on in the living room here, guys. I'm looking for my new baby. I saw a buzzard in the field earlier, in the pasture earlier today, and it has me a little concerned about this latest calf. Well, we may be going on a little bit of a wild goose chase here if I can't find him. Go ahead, and go ahead, 213 and notch. Y'all are always the last ones. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right 213 you always got to be a pain let's scare 213 back here a little bit all righty <laughs> 213 has a mind of her own she's probably going to be the sweetest cow we've got i just about guarantee you here she comes <laughs> check this out she's running and bucking and kicking come on girl get it girl <laughs> oh man you don't get that every day on youtube hey let's play some video games <laughs> oh guys welcome to the farm it's a beautiful day i just stepped in a 40 pound pile of cow manure that was really cool <laughs> i am looking for this baby i'm we're missing it's number 216 should be the smallest calf out here sometimes they'll bed down in the grass and that may be where it's at but I'm a little concerned. I did see a buzzard up here earlier, and that baby's really small. Buzzards will pluck the eyeballs out of calves, which is not cool at all. So hopefully we didn't lose that baby. I, I looked for it earlier today, but it was buried up in the tall grass somewhere. Here's another opportunity right here. Sometimes they'll get into a water tank. So let's make sure, because that would be super super horrible okay well a little look in the water tank we'll show you guys our goldfish we got goldfish down in the tank right there there's four goldfish in there um the goldfish help keep the water tank clean so welcome welcome to the live stream guys <laughs> i'm gonna get you guys a shot of these cows and then we're gonna stick around we're gonna do some question and answer we'll do some chatting a little bit we're gonna make this not so long of a live stream tonight because I am going on, an, an, on a dinner date and I've got to go shower and wash this right shoe. <laughs> so let me circle back over here and see. Is that mom? I don't know if that's mom or not. I gotta circle back around here and see if I can find that new calf because I'm a little concerned, like I said. I don't know. little concerned we've had beautiful weather the last few days guys a high of like 77 today here in uh in the foothills of the blue ridge mountains in north carolina it's been absolutely gorgeous 
cannot complain about 77 degrees. I, I'm going to go out here. I'm going to walk out here and see. So we're talking about going broke farming. Um, guys, I've really had a very unimpressive time at the uh, cattle auction. I got a video coming out this weekend about it, but you know, Americans want cheap food, right? So they want cheap food and they don't want, <laughs> they want cheap food, but they want grass fed. They want the best of the best. Man, that's not him. Hmm. This is Notch. I'm looking for number 216. Might have to search for him off the camera or for her off the camera. Cause I sure don't see her. Hmm. That's a little odd. It's probably buried up in the tall grass or somewhere in them hay bales up there. I don't know. But anyway. Hey, sweetie. That's my sweetie. How are you? How are you, girl? A very good girl. That's my sweetie. <laughs> uh, sweetie's one of my favorites. Sweetie and Susie. Susie's been a little bit uh, standoffish here lately. So, <laughs> all right, we'll turn the camera back around here. Yep, gonna have to do a little cow search here after I get off the uh, off the live stream. So, welcome to the farm, everybody. It's been a great week. Been a busy week. Uh, trying to get some good content out for you guys. Been out mowing, mowing, mowing. I've probably mowed. Oh, today's Wednesday. I guess it's Wednesday. All the days are running together. I've probably mowed around six hours on average per day uh, for the last week or so. Uh, it's been uh, quite the challenge. Just mowing around all the, all the pastures and getting the weeds under control. We've got a lot of weeds that are just simply out of control here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Um, I'm really concerned about this calf. I don't know if you guys look at the concern in my eyes. I am really concerned about this calf. I can't wait. We got to we gotta go on a search. I wanted to chat, but we got to go search. I'm very concerned about this calf. I did see a buzzer down in the field earlier. And sometimes that can be a very, very bad thing. So I am going to walk <laughs> with you guys. So bear with me. Hello, Nick Gill, Ricky Ventures. Myrna, Waymaker Farm. All kinds of folks in here. Waymaker Farm's in here. I moved a lot too. Annie's in here. Your conscience is in here. Philip the Wise, good to have you. Good to have all you guys. Awesome. Awesome. If you send super chats, they will pop up there. If you send, um, um, Oh, what are they called? Uh, <laughs> stars on Facebook. We're on Facebook and we're on YouTube right now. We got about 622 people watching. And uh, if you send stars, I will go in and personally thank you after the video. They don't pop up for some reason. And like I said, I'm out here. This calf could be laying. He's so small. He could be laying in like five inch grass, six inch grass and be hidden from me. And this is a frequent thing. Calves just lay down and hide. Uh, I mean, he's so small, he's almost as small as a manure pile. <laughs> oh, we got, gosh, what is that over there? I hope we don't, if we have a dead calf, that's not gonna be good at all. We only lost one calf this year so far. If that's a manure pile, that's the biggest manure pile. <laughs> on the whole farm. And I think it is. Holy macaroni. Yep, that's manure. Look at this. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's like a big manure pile out there. So if you're just now joining us, we're looking for a calf. I didn't anticipate looking for a calf uh, today, but I'm out here just making sure. I don't see, we had a calf born just a couple days ago and I just don't see it bound to be hiding in the grass somewhere. And the cool thing about this poly fence wire is that the calves can go underneath it and they can find tall grass and go hide in it. In fact, I think maybe, maybe I see them. Sometimes I'll get the drone out. Like after the, the live stream, if I don't, oh, I see them, I see them. <laughs> All right, guys, this, you're gonna love this. Um, let me change the camera around here real quick. 
you are going to flip. Do you see a calf? The calf is right there. We're going to walk up there. <laughs> I thought I might have seen him. And he's noticed, or she has noticed that everybody has moved. And I would have never even thought to look over here for her. <laughs> Let's go see her. She is hid good. <laughs> we didn't know we were going to do this. $10 super chat. Thank you from, who is that? Philip the Wise for your dinner date. First round on me. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. I've been craving guacamole. Holy guacamole. <laughs> so uh, first we're going to go find this calf, and I'll show you guys. It's right there. There it is. I can't believe that I saw it. Come on, baby. Hey, baby. Do you see it? Let me know when you see it. It was laying down in this tall grass right here. Smart, smart little calf. This is probably a keeper calf right here. If it's smart enough to lay right there. Hey, little baby. Then it's probably gonna take off running. Guaranteed. Hey, how did I see? You get an eye for this thing. It's like having your babies, man. You get an eye for these things. This calf let me rub its head this morning. Hey, little baby. Hey, little baby. How you doing? The prettiest eyelashes you ever saw. Hey, little friend. Hey, little friend. How are you? Hey. Good little friend. Good little friend. <laughs> now, go find your mom. Got the scours a little bit. Go find mom. We're going to run it out of the bushes and let it get to mama. Go get some milk, little, little girl. Go get some milk. So the little calves can go right under the fence. Seems a little staggery. Must have just woke up. Go ahead. Mom's waiting over there. We got we to gotta be a good cow. <laughs> oh, I stepped in a hole. <laughs> go be a good cow. <laughs> Do you guys think you'd be watching me hurt a cow? Ricky Ventures sends a $10 super chat. Thank you, Ricky Ventures. I'll pay for the second round. <laughs> the date is great. Thanks, man. Thanks. Guys, I, I know a lot of you have been praying for me. You know, I have got divorced a little while back, uh, last October. And things just, you know, it's hard to bring a, a, a lady into this environment, you know. There's mom right there. It's hard to bring a new lady into this environment. It's a little overwhelming for anybody that were to, were to date me. So, plus I'm pretty cheesy too. So, go ahead. There you go. Get you some milk. Get off that fence. You're going to learn about fence getting shot by the fence in a minute. <laughs> so, this is mom. This is, you saw me rub sweetie on the head just a minute ago. This is Sweetie's mama. So that's good genetics right there. That's what we want on the farm. <laughs> uh, and it went straight to the wrong cow for milk. Thank goodness, man, I was really worried about that. Good deal, we'll whip the camera around here. We're gonna go sit down and have a little chat with you guys. Yep. Thank you guys for the super chats. It does help. That's 20 bucks towards a hay bale. Uh, $9,400 worth of hay this year. Hay cost for me uh, nearly tripled. And we've got to have hay to get these animals through the winter. So uh, awesome, awesome stuff. Hop over the fence here. Get on the four-wheeler and we'll have ourselves a little chat. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, I think... It'd be best if we sat on the four-wheeler and we had us some pretty cows in the background chowing down, don't you? <laughs> All right, let's get you guys set up here and we'll have some little question and answer. Okay, perfect, perfect. Couldn't get any better than that. All righty, 
So everything happens for a reason. Absolutely, I agree. Everything happens for a reason. It, even if the reason is not such a good reason, everything does does happen for a reason. So uh, Michael Scott sends a dollar ninety nine super chat. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Two dollar bill. Um, Facebook user says, "My dream life is to have a ranch." Well, let me tell you what, buddy. That dream requires a lot of work, a lot of work. So we took some cows to the market this week, and I'm telling you, uh, you're seeing it in the grocery store. I'm seeing it in fertilizer, but I'm not putting fertilizer. So the, the guy that buys fertilizer that makes my hay, that's where I'm seeing it. So I'm seeing input cost go sky high and output cost not moving at all. So uh, cattle prices haven't changed and I don't know what the deal is. I don't know if I should hang on to my cows throughout the winter here in hopes that cattle prices will go up with, with the, the current market. But, uh, I took 10 cows to the market and, uh, less than $5,000. So yeah, yeah, it's bad. Waymaker farm, $80 a bale where I live in North Carolina. Whoa, dude, where do you live? Waymaker farm because you can come here and you can buy it way cheaper. I got a guy for sure. I've been moving fence posts. I got a little grease on my arm here. <laughs> uh, I've been out driving fence posts today. Um, don't like the cattle market, no money. There's no money in it. And this has made up my mind. We're actually gonna downsize the herd just a little bit more and just start selling beef right off the farm. So that's the goal, selling beef right off the farm. So you can come here. First time live and don't get poop on your fall, dude. The four wheelers covered in cow poop. Beard is good. Thank you, Hamid. Uh, looking at the comments here. Don't. But Marjorie Hill sends a twenty dollars super chat. She's got the winning number, twenty dollars. <laughs> Thank you, Margie. Thank you so much. Uh, Got to sell direct. I, I feel you totally. I feel your pain. I took twelve to the market, got sixty five hundred dollars. Was expecting ten. It's horrible. It's it's just absolutely horrible. Uh, it seems they're making it so hard for farms because of places like McDonald's. I don't think McDonald's has anything to do with it at all. I think the the thing is is that Americans want cheap food, and the price of cheap food is that the farmer doesn't earn a living. Uh, and that's it. They want cheap food. They want garbage food. They want to go to the grocery store and, and, and buy garbage. Uh, and that's sad. Uh, the average American can't really afford I mean, to buy good grass fed beef right off the farm. Um, but you have my promise that I'll do my very best to, uh, to sell good quality food at a good quality price. Um, today, somebody told me that, uh, there's a pig farmer, local pig farmer, that's selling pork at $14 a pound, $14 a pound, 980 bucks for half of a hog. That's ridiculous. That's just crazy right there. Um, I don't under, I don't get that. <laughs> um, so anyways, cruising through here on your comments. I run a small homestead myself. Your videos answer a lot of questions. Thank you, Lawton. And I asked somebody where they're, a homesteading hustle. We <laughs> homesteading hustle. I watched your video. Uh, a homesteading. Uh, what's the brand names of those holder things you have? These are called Co Copland, uh, Copland ratchet grips or Rhino grips. They're in my Amazon store. There's a link to my Amazon store on almost every video. Not the live streams, but the regular scheduled videos. So go in there. They're in there on my Amazon page. Um, Boy, the comments are rolling in fast. Uh, get your butcher shop up and running. Yep, it's easier said than done. It takes time and it takes a lot of money to get this stuff going. LOL, I sent, <laughs> I sent early. Okay. Colpin, it's Colpin, K-O-L-P-I-N. Again, they're in my Amazon store. You can go in there and look. There's a section for ATV and, and automo automotive upgrades in there so pork is the cheapest meat here absolutely um aj says if you're a small farm and you're not making money you need to diversify especially now when food prices are sky high i agree but that diversification cost money brother uh it costs money and we're talking about diversification well it, again it costs money to diversify 
And when you diversify, what are you going to do? What, you know, there's only so much grass on the farm, right? I don't know why that did that. Okay. Chicken and beef prices are crazy high. Beef prices are crazy high. So I took calves to the market. The one that sold for the cheapest sold for $385. The cheapest uh, feeder calf, about that size. $385. I just bought two ribeyes and it cost me 48 bucks because I'm all out of beef. I, I, I'm all out of beef and I can't get into the uh, butcher shop for quite some time. So into, into May. So Wanda says, good evening. Josh got back from a walk. Awesome. Buy right in Stokesdale has really good prices on meat. But that's garbage, buddy. That's garbage. Okay. That's the feedlot beef that you're buying out there. They have great prices on meat. Absolutely. Uh, ask them where they get it from. Now, I may be wrong. Don't let me, <laughs> don't make, don't make me eat my words, but um, I, I know they've got cheap meat and I don't know how they sell it that cheap. I do not know how they sell it that cheap. I'm going to tell you, it's probably not good grass fed beef like this. It's probably, uh, Feed, feedlot beef is what I'm guessing. Grow hemp, not growing hemp. There's a million people all over the world trying to grow hemp and make their million dollars and it ain't happening, brother. It just ain't happening. I'm not growing hemp on this farm. I love animals. This is what I wanted to do with my farm. I want to raise animals. I enjoy that. So, um, Josh, have you looked into more aggressive marketing? I've got the marketing tool right here, buddy. If I'm going to sell beef, I just got to be able to sell beef and I've got to be able to store beef. I don't um, I don't have, a, I live in a 14 by 80 mobile home on 150 acres and we just built the great big shop, but it takes time and it takes money to finish that out. So we'll be putting in the butcher shop and we'll have freezer beef there, but it's going to be probably June of next year before I do that. So couldn't a non-professional butcher cut up your calf? Hold on. Cut you up a calf just for your well it'd be a cow it wouldn't be a calf it would be a steer um yeah absolutely but you know i want i want my meat to come from uh from an inspected facility i don't want to get sick i want to i want my meat to come unless i butcher it myself um i want to i want my meat to come from a from a great place so uh that's it is land cheap there land ain't cheap anywhere anymore buddy michael keenan and I bought this farm, this, this farm cost $2,000 an acre, but it didn't look like this. So you take a $2,000 an acre farm that's overgrown and covered in brush. If you look back at some of the videos from five years, six years ago, you'll see it did not look like this. So pond question, new property has a row of trees like 20 foot tall near the pond. If I cut them all down, have roots already done the damage? If it's on your pond dam or is it on your pond in, around your pond? That's the question. Yep. Thanks, Patrick. It does. It makes sense. You looking to get USDA certified with your operation. I am not looking to butcher cattle for a living, my brother. I am not trying to do that at all. I'm trying to, I don't have time, man. This is, this is like a one hour block of time that I actually have <laughs> a little bit of time available. I got up this morning, uh, way before sun up and have been running, 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 running all day long, had equipment failures, had uh, camera failures, all sorts of stuff. So D says, I'm enjoying your chats, chats about farm life. Awesome. Guys, if you don't watch on Facebook and if you are on Facebook, I just want everybody to know, and I'm not excluding anybody on YouTube, but we do live streams about five days a week, sometimes six days a week over on Facebook. Uh, may start migrating that over into the YouTube channel too. So Plato always knew around the pond. I don't think you need to worry about it around the pond. If it's on the pond dam, you've got damage. If it's around the pond, I don't know, man. You can. I'd leave a few of them around the pond if I were you. Our farmer's market has a farmer with a freezer truck and sells beef at the farmer's market. That's good. You need to ask him about his cows and ask him how they are raised and if they're grass solely on grass or if they're grain fed. You need to ask them those questions. You need to ask if they've had antibiotics. You need to ask if they've been wormed. You need to ask those questions, guys, because that stays in the meat, okay? I uh, would say that out of, we have 34 cows here. Out of 34 cows, I would say that only 14 of those cows have ever been wormed, okay? And I haven't wormed any of these animals that have been out here for two years, 
two years. It's a testimony to moving these animals like they're supposed to move, like the wildebeest out on the Serengeti, like the bison. These, cat, these animals move twice a day. They're not eating right beside their own poop, okay? So that's why they don't have a high parasite load, parasites meaning worms. Um, I appreciate you have started. I appreciate you have started my own place. You've been a big inspiration. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it, brother. Wanda says, like, like that, you have educated an educated plan and work at that plan. Yep. And this isn't, yeah, this ain't get rich. And I'm not some crazy hippie. I'm going to tell you that. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm a hardworking man. That's it. I'm, I, I get out here and I work my butt off and, uh, and I, it ain't rainbows and butterflies all the time. And I'm, and I'm not going to give you any crazy hippie recipes to, uh, for a better life or anything like that, man. I work hard and I play hard and I enjoy my life. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. So being self-employed, what do you use for health insurance? I have private health insurance. The options I have seen are very expensive. Yeah, I pay, well, I'm 45 years old and I pay right at close to $500 a month for health insurance. So yeah, that's the rub. That was the best the cheapest I could find really and the best I could find. I'll tell you a little secret that I learned. Uh, as long as you're attempting to make payment to the bank, they say they can't uh, um, put a lien on your property. So I don't know. I don't know what you might look into that. <laughs> what does grain finished meat mean? Fran Castles Lane. Grain finished means the cows sit out here and they eat like normal. Then they pin the cow up or put them in a smaller lot and they feed them grain. These are ruminant animals. They are herbivores. They are not grainivores, okay? So, um, although I will say grain finished beef is delicious. I mean, it is delicious, um, but we mess with their digestive system and we throw off their rumen, their digestive enzymes. We throw it off when we start giving them grain. So, yep. Linda, yeah, you weren't here. I found the baby. <laughs> We eat deer meat most of the time. So by right is our, is our second meat, LOL. Yep. And I'll be doing some hunting this year. We're going to fill the freezer full of deer meat. Absolutely. How many hours do you work a day? I work from the time I get up to the time I go to bed, brother. I don't know how many hours that is, but <laughs> uh, I guess it'll be 18 hours today probably. So no audio. It's on your end, Mr. Jim. Jim, refresh. <laughs> a homesteading hustle. Same with the sleep. Yeah, I'm going to say I sleep six hours a day and I'm up working the rest of the time. And I wake up thinking about farm because I hear the cows. Do you plant ryegrass? I did last year. I tried planting ryegrass so I would have some winter forage. It did not work. The soil here on this farm is very poor, guys, and it's slowly coming back, but it's, it's coming. For, uh, it, it's coming back, but it's very poor. Lawn Marmon on Matt says, Heads up, bro, watch out for China. Sabotaging American farms and farm animals. Uh, Biden, Pelosi, we've been watching Fox News too much, brother. And I'm not a Fox Newser, and I'm not a CNN Newser, and I'm not an MSNBC or a Bloomberg guy. I'm neither or none. You watch that stuff, and the sky is constantly falling. It's always something. Oh, it's so bad. It's not so bad. Okay, I don't understand how inflation is going up and how beef prices are skyrocketing in the grocery store, but they're not skyrocketing for me. I'm not getting more for my cows. That's frustrating right there. But, um, I, dude, I don't watch those news channels. I don't watch them. I've got neighbors that watch them. I've got friends that watch them. I've got folks that are diehard Republicans. I've got folks that are diehard Democrats that are, that are all friends, and I'll tell you, I don't watch that crap because it's garbage and it fills your mind with the sky is falling and there's no way that we can live a healthy life when we're constantly worried about the sky falling on our head or China or Batman or Robin or Superman or whatever it is, man. I can't live like that. So I, I just can't do it. Um, no politics, please, says somebody. Who was that? Craig? Yeah. No politics, please. Um, yeah, I, I just don't decide yeah, at all. So <laughs> thank you. Amen. Amen. Stick with me on this, guys. See something real, man. Join us on the live streams on Facebook in the mornings. 
the sky isn't constantly falling. I've got a neighbor and I love the guy to death, but, it, but he watches the news all the time. And it's, there's always some sort of turmoil. We can't live our lives like this. We're not, human beings are not designed to live a life in turmoil. It will adversely affect your health eventually. Ask me how I know. I mean, I was in a toxic situation uh, with, with the marriage uh, for a long time. Thank goodness I'm finally over that mess and things are better. And she's doing better too. So I, I, everything's, the stars will align eventually, guys. So, all right. Where do you take your cows for market? So I posted something on Facebook. I went up to Spring Lake Stockyard in Manita, Virginia uh, this past weekend, Saturday. My youngest daughter was allergic to deer meat. Hmm, interesting. A lot of allergies out there now. Get your kids outside, that's for sure, man. The JJ says the news clowns sure jumped on the COVID bandwagon. That's all we heard about for months. Well, JJ, I'm a registered nurse, buddy, and I'm going to tell you right now, and some people don't believe it. I've had it twice. I, <laughs> I know what being sick is like. Um, I, you know, I really don't have any input as to what the news channels have to say about it because I didn't watch the news channels, but I still got sick. So, um, and it wasn't the flu and it wasn't uh, any of that mess. I, I still got sick. So I, whether you believe in it or not, doesn't matter to me. If you get sick, is it, is it the big C or not? I don't know. I, you know, <laughs> what do you think of Rural King Tractor? Rural King Tractors are made by TYM. TYM tractors are what I have in the barn down here. So I think TYM USA, you'd probably get a better deal. Um, so, but I can't dog on Rural King tractors. I've never actually gone and sat in a Rural King tractor at the Rural King dealership or uh, Rural King store. So I like your base. I like your baseball and your stuff. Okay. I sorry. I don't have no baseball, man. <laughs> I'm modeling my beginner farm after yours. Thanks for all your info. Thanks, Jack. Appreciate it, buddy. It takes a lot of work and a lot of time, and it has taken a lot of money to build this place. Uh, the mega shop down there, I'm a, I'm, you guys are going to laugh. I'm $100,000 over budget on that shop. That's why the brakes are put on. I'm pumping the brakes on that place for a little bit. Um, yeah. New steel MS881 Magnum chainsaw. Cutting wood, maple, pine, cedar, firewood. Groot for you, brother. That's a big saw to be toting around. I watch, <laughs> somebody said, I watch Mayberry, not the news. So you watch uh, Andy Griffith, not the news. That's only, uh, it's Mount Airy, North Carolina. It's only about an hour from here. Do you like Massey Ferguson? Yeah, I've got a Massey Ferguson. I've had four Massey Ferguson tractors. I'm with you when it comes to the news. Now, all those were older tractors. For this city girl, Josh explains simple details. Thank you. Twilla, Twilla says that. You know, I get fussed at by viewers about spelling stuff out too simple. And then I get fussed at by viewers and like, we're not idiots. We're not five-year-olds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, man, there's just no common ground to find, is there? Uh, okay, Al. We're proud that you watch baseball and stuff, bro. <laughs> Good evening. Watching from... Ephrata, hopefully I didn't kill that. Pennsylvania, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Twila, Twi Twila, is it Twila or? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to kill your name. My bad. <laughs> I was raised on a little 16 acre farm. I learned hard and many don't know the satisfaction. Absolutely, give your kids something responsible. Keep it simple. Absolutely, Gary, I believe in that too. K-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> I'm the stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> LOL, it's okay. Yep, yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Kill your name. What's the product called that sealed the dirt while building your ponds? It's called Damn It. Damn It. Uh, from Shalex Industries. And I talked to that guy on the phone that runs the company in... Uh, and yeah, it was, it was uh, definitely a, a pond saver, a lifesaver. 
You feed your cattle minerals. Every paddock, every paddock out here that the cows are on has a mineral block. It's a block about this big. It weighs 50 pounds, and each one has a mineral block. The cows need minerals just like we do. They need their vitamins from the grass and their nutrition from the grass, and they need minerals. It's like Gatorade for the cows. Absolutely. Yeah, great name for the pond sealer. Absolutely, Ricky. Guys, check out Ricky Ventures' channel. Ricky's got a cool channel. He's, he's a nice, nice fella out in Minnesota where it's getting ready to be cold. Daggone, Wes, one lonely farmer's in the house. He said, moo. Wes, where are you bailing? Hey, brother, when you, let me know when you're coming back to North Carolina. We got to take you and the wifey poo and, and this baby out for dinner. Man, last time I saw you, you didn't even, you hadn't, she hadn't even had her baby yet. So there is a gnat right on the lens of the camera. That's what you guys are seeing. <laughs> Get some sort of bin for it. Keep the salt off the bare ground. I'll tell you right now, my brother, Harley, when you put a salt block out here, these cows roll that salt block all around. So as they go through, they butt it and roll it around and it doesn't stay all in one spot. So I appreciate the uh, insight. And I do have some uh, Super Duty mineral feeders, but I have 62 different paddocks that these cows are grazing their way through, okay? 62. 62 paddocks means... <laughs> a lot uh it means that uh, i cannot afford to put the salt block in in a container so and i buy it by the pallet and deer do like it yep wes tell us what you were doing you've been doing today one lonely farmer not this year next year's in the works okay so you're not coming to north carolina well shoot i guess i'm about to come up to jersey guys if you're not following wes uh over at one lonely farmer he is a colorful individual and absolutely the salt of the earth and he gets into some funny political talks and i i just love to you the reason people subscribe to you wes and i know you know this already First of all is the farm content because it's great farm content. Wes pretty much bales hay uh, and farms hay and corn and soybeans and all kinds of stuff for a living. And uh, Wes is unfiltered as it gets, but he's the salt of the earth, the kindest guy you'd ever run into. He's probably four years older, five years. You, are you 50 yet, Wes? I've been hauling corn and baling hay. Changed the red tires on the Peterbilt. Nice. Wes has been at this for a very long time. Wes grew up farming. I didn't grow up farming. I, I grew up uh, on a piece of property and we had cows and pigs and chickens and goats and stuff like that. But it was like a homestead. 50, yes. Okay, so we're five years apart. I just turned 45, Wes. So, have many deer on the farm. Oh, yeah. deer. The deer around here are a bit of a nuisance uh, at times. Uh, it used to be before I got the cows, there'd be 50-something deer out here every night. There's there's 34 cows out here. Imagine 50 something deer. Patriot REF, ref, what's up, Josh? Hey man, I responded to one of your comments today. And guys, by the way, when you leave a comment on the Stony Ridge Farm channel, I get to it, okay? I see it. I see almost every single comment. So don't, don't be afraid to leave comments. Is it legal to hunt in your area off a mineral block? Um, if you've got cows out here and you're not putting a mineral block out to bait deer, I think so. But you can bait deer here in North Carolina in my county. Your conscience says you have a nice time. You have a good time too, man. Absolutely. We're going to take about five more questions and I'm going on a fancy dinner date to the Mexican restaurant where I'm going to get Mexican street tacos with guacamole and avocado. I love avocados. Absolutely delicious. Hal says, always post when you start chatting with someone, LOL. <laughs> Thanks, Hal. I think you're a channel member, Hal. Thank you so much if you are, buddy. I appreciate it. You would think you will get snow <laughs> this year, this winter. Man, I ain't got no clue about that, brother. But we'll, if we do get snow, we'll, we'll uh, be out here in the snow moving the cows. <laughs> fancy dinner, big fancy Mexican dinner. All you young folks, I'm 60 plus in here. Oh, you're still young too, brother. <laughs> uh, could you talk more about the trees on ponds? I inherited a heavy, heavily wooded area. So if you've got trees on your pond dam, you don't want trees on your pond dam. That's, that's basically it. Um, otherwise, trees around your pond are okay. You just want 
want to have enough room to get in there and fish and utilize your pond. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> have a great day and enjoy. Thank you, Belvin. Thank you guys for those super chats. Uh, appreciate it. We got 744 of you. If everybody right now hits that like button and hits that little share button, find your favorite Stony Ridge Farmer video and share it. Uh, please do that. That's your homework assignment. Share it on your social media. It helps grow the channel. We just hit 100,000 followers on Facebook and we've got, we're pushing close to 700,000 over on YouTube. So it's really great. Wes still in here? Leaving comments. Wes is just a good dude, man. Salt of the earth. I could talk to Wes on the phone for an hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> uh, just a great guy. When I showed up, I don't think he knew what to expect. He, he probably thought there was, he's like, man, this fruit, nut, and berry guy showing up here to my farm. I don't know what it's going to be like. And I showed up and, then, <laughs> and we figured out we were pretty similar dudes, man. Uh, let's grow the farm to 750,000. It's getting close, brother. Girls are looking great. Cows are looking great. I can't share because they don't have social media crap. Well, I don't blame you. This is social media too because we're socially interacting. So, <laughs> well, folks, we're going to take two more good questions. I already have trees on the pond dam. Get them off quick as you can. Just get them off. Stump it and put some dirt back on there, buddy. Um, Wes says nuts and berries for sure, <laughs> but you left a friend. That's awesome. Wes let me ride and I, did I get to drive it? I can't, I think I got to drive it right as model a, uh, um, Ford. That was pretty cool. Speaking of deer, there's deer walking up in the woods right down here beside me. We got a lot of deer on the farm. Absolutely. Are you on rumble? Nope. Not on rumble. I don't even know what rumble is. I need to learn that. American farmers selling their lands to the Chinese government. It's sad. Fred, don't believe everything you hear on the hype on the TV, dude. Don't believe it, okay? <laughs> Just don't believe it. But I can see why American farmers, small farmers like me, are, are not making any money on the farm. I mean, this is a wonderful place to live, a beautiful place to live. But, uh, man, I got my heart broke uh, this, this week. You'll see the video. It's coming very soon, so... We had a little talk. Are you going to store gasoline? I have a 50 gallon gasoline storage tank in my uh, shop. That's it. So, Jennifer, have a good night. Follow you every day. So different than the Canadian way. Grew up farming. This is different. I'm doing it different than everybody's doing, man. I'm doing it way different than a whole lot of people are doing. So, I love your honesty. Thank you, Dorothy. Appreciate that. Philip, have a good one, brother. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks so much. Rumble is a conservative news source with Dan Bong, Bongino. Uh, I don't know. Is it true Bill Gates is buying up all the farmland? Guys, stop living like this. <laughs> stop. Just please stop. Turn that stupid TV off, man. Remember when mom said that thing will melt your brain? Turn that thing off. Turn it off, and I swear the sky isn't falling. They're doing this to get ratings. If you can't see through that crap, you've got to be able to see through it. You've got to be able to see through it. Whether it doesn't matter to me whether it's CNN or whether it's Bloomberg or whether it's Fox or whether it's any of these news, even the Weather Channel, you can't trust anymore. They're like, it's the biggest mega storm ever to hit the, you know, <laughs> it was supposed to rain all day yesterday, it didn't rain at all. <laughs> Uh, Robin sends a $20 super sticker. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> it's true. Chinese bought a North Dakota from a potato, bought in North Dakota from a potato farmer. Big whoop. I don't eat potatoes. <laughs> I don't know, man. I do eat potatoes. That's a joke. Um, I, I don't care what China's not buying my farm unless they offer me, I would say I, it, it would take a lot. I don't want to change my life. I don't want to move. I, this is my life. This is it. This is all. This is my life. And that's what I, this is the way I want to live. So uh, if I don't, if somebody sells their own property, it's their own right to do so. Um, yeah. 
Have you got all your water lines in? No, not yet. Uh, I'll have the trencher back probably in about a month, and I've got probably another 2,000 feet of water line. Been watching you on YouTube for a year, but just recently started following you on Facebook. I've learned a lot from you and appreciate it all. Alan, thank you. Thank you. There's there's more, there's some good content over the, there on Facebook. I posted over 200 and yeah, 200 pieces of content on Facebook last month. So don't sell to China. <laughs> if China's our enemy, then why in the world are we importing goods and from China like gangbusters? Everybody is China our enemy. Well, if it if China is such the enemy, then why hasn't the government stepped in and cut them off? If they're our enemies, right? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Is it hype? Is it bull crap? I don't know. I don't know. I've never been to China. I do have a friend that has a Chinese wife from China. They went over there and got married. Uh, China's very westernized, he said. They eat bats, not cows. <laughs> China is our rival, not our enemy, says George Martin. Well, I tell you what, when you go buy a Chinese socket set and it costs $100, or you go buy an American made socket set and it costs $8,000, Who's going to win, bro? I don't know, man. The average American working man can't afford to buy an average American working man's tools. Can they? Can they? Can you guys afford to go buy Snap-on tools? Or American-made? Anything made in America? I'll tell you something I got right here. This sickle. You guys are going to love this. Hold on. Check this out. Read that. What does that say? That is a mind blower, a blast from the past. What does that say? First one to say, you know what? First one to say it, I'm gonna get a hat. What does that say? First one, it comes across my screen. <laughs> gonna get him a Stony Ridge Farmer hat. Mac Tools, oh, who can afford Mac Tools? I can't. Gary Rose Jr. JC Pennies. Can you believe that? A farm tool at JC Pennies. <laughs> How old do you think that thing is? Um, go in. Okay. Let's get back to the uh to the winner here. You just won a hat, brother. Oh, where are we at? Screw down here. Uh first one to come across my screen, and that's what counts. Okay, so stick with it. We got a, <laughs> a hundred of them now. Coming through, coming on, coming on. Oh, where is the first one? Yep, a homesteading hustle. Now you better wear my hat on your channel. What do you think? I think that's who won. Hold on. Let me make it official here. Yep, that's it. A homesteading hustle just won. Awesome. You better wear that hat and give me a shout out on your channel. <laughs> Go on. Uh, I emailed you the other day, Homesteading Hustle, by the way, and your email was wrong on your channel. So hopefully you've corrected that. Shoot me an email, stonyridgefarmer.com. Go over there and uh, click contact me. So <laughs> some in Australia can't afford it. Yeah, exactly. So, well, guys, it's been a wonderful evening. The cows, let's see if we can get them to move. Woo! <laughs> uh, it's been a great evening guys thank you all so much for joining me for the wednesday night live stream we're just chatting a little bit having some fun this is the way that i can connect with you let you know i'm a real person this is real this is a real farm and and uh i appreciate every one of you for being here reach back there pat yourself on the back because you're supporting small farms by by being here with me um if not for you if not for you guys uh, following the channel, I couldn't build this farm as fast as I have. So thank you all so, so very much. Uh, I work very hard to bring you awesome content and bring you real life from the farm. So thank you guys. I'm headed out to get myself <laughs> some Mexican food. You guys take care. Have a good evening. Let's see if we can get the cows to say good night. Woo! Come on, guys. <laughs> good night guys have a wonderful night thank you all so much for joining me thank you for the super chats and folks that left 
uh, stars from over on Facebook. I'll go over there and I'll personally thank you. I appreciate it. Guys, hit that like button on your way out the door. And we'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. Appreciate it. Woo! <laughs> now, how do I click the end? There it is. Burp. <laughs>